Okay, guys, uh, this is the second session on complex numbers. Um, and what we're going to do today, we're going to solve equations, quadratic equations, using comp uh, with complex numbers. In fact, not just quadratic, also cubed. Um, and then we're going to go on to a different representation of complex numbers. Okay, so there's two parts for the session. But first of all, let's just talk a little bit about a few basic things. So this last session starts with I squared, or definition of I squared. The definition of I squared, well, we can use either one of them. I squared is equal minus one. In other words, I is, in ne is the root of the negative one. Okay, it's an imaginary number. It's not a real number. Okay, obviously there's no real number if you take square root minus one, you're not gonna get a real number. We define I as an imaginary number like that. Um, then we created complex numbers, okay? We normally give the letter Z for them as a plus b i okay so they've got the real part the complex number is made out of a real part and imaginary part which is some kind of multiple of i okay now i want to just you know we did something similar to this we, we had a look at powers of i so for example i power eight this is something that they can ask easily what will be i to the power of eight how are we going to do that you just want to get it to the multiple of i squared. Square, okay. So, because we know what i squared is, so it's easy to write i squared to the power of? <laughs> Four. Okay, because we the rule is multiplying, okay? And then now I know i squared is minus one. Power four, that would be equal to? One. one okay? And, and we've done that. But what we didn't do is i to the power of, let's do i to the power of nine. So we have to break it out. So we'll have to break it out. So it's i to the power of 8 times i to the power of 1. So we break it to an even um, uh, exponent and, uh, uh, and 1. Okay. And now we just worked out i to the power of 8, so that's 1. And i to the power of 1 is? Uh, i. i. So in other words, it's I. just i. And should we even write that one then have to put no, just i. Let's let's try and do. What about uh, i to the power of seven? Let's just do one more. So it will be i to the power six times some i. Okay. So we just need to figure out i to the power of six. i to the power of six will be i squared to the power of three times i. Okay. Squared that minus one to the power of three. So the answer will be minus i. Okay. What I should have already done with you, let's do that quickly. Just another interesting thing. Okay, so we've got i to the power of 1 is obviously i. i squared is? Minus 1. i squared is? i 3 is? We just multiply that by i, so it will be minus i. And then i to the power of 4, we did once upon a time, will be? i squared squared, so it will be? Minus 1 squared. One. one and check this out okay and, 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 and I should have really started with i to the power of zero what is i to the power of zero one it's one anything power of zero is one so we've got a cycle here one i minus one minus i back to one i to the power of five should be now because it's i to the power of four times i right i power of one. i to the power of five is i to the power of four times i so what is i to the power of 4? 1. So again, we're back in i. So I see 1, i, minus 1, minus i, 1, i. Next one more will be without calculating. Minus 1, minus. We've got some kind of period here. Okay? Just as an aside, I think it is uh, quite useful. Okay. But uh, back to our situation here. We've got an equation. Okay? So we've got some complex numbers on this side, some complex numbers on this side, and we're told they're equal. Okay? Now let's have a look at this for a second. How many variables are in this equation? Things that we don't know, unknowns. I is a letter, but we know what it is. A and B, so two variables. How many equations you need to know, really, when you want to solve? You need two, but we only have one. So we might have a problem, but let's have a look. Okay? So let's square that, okay? One square is one. Now I'm doing, I'm using this formula. A plus B squared. I hope you guys know that, right? 
You know that one, okay? So 1 squared plus 2 times 1 times 2i will be 4i. Okay, I'm going to go a bit quick here, but just stop me if you're not sure about something. Plus 2i squared will be minus 4. Can you see why that is? You need to go, no? Yeah. Right? So what is this, you know, what is 2i squared? Is 4i squared, in other words, minus 4. I'm going a bit quick here, but uh, tell me if you're not sure. Now, I'm just doing normal uh, foiling. So it's 2a minus ai plus 2bi. Okay, now I've got b time, bi time minus i. What is minus i time i? That's a really important one. I had it on my board last time. What is minus i time i? It is minus i squared. And I know what is i squared. So my, what is minus i squared? One. That's an important one to remember. Minus i time i is one. If you remember using the language of last year, minus and i are complex to conjugate. Okay, they just depends on the difference of the i. So that always gives you a positive number. We used that fact last time. So okay, so the last one is bi time. What is bi time minus i is going to be plus b. I don't know if you can see that i time minus i is plus one. So this is going to be b. I'm just going to pause here and let you catch up, see if all is good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we want to collect like terms, right? So, and but what I'm, gonna, I'm not going to move it all to one side, okay? So I've got 1 minus 4 is minus 3 plus 4i. And here I'm going to collect the, 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 the real terms, 2a plus b. And, and here I'm going to have plus 2b minus a bracket i. Let's have a look at it for a second. Okay? Have a look at it for a second. Okay? Each one, yeah? Can you have the um, real equal real? That's it, that's it, okay? This is a complex number. This is a complex number. But these are not just any numbers, okay? We've got the real part here, and this is also the real part of this complex number. We've got the imaginary part here, and we've got the imaginary part here. So we were a bit nervous because we thought, oh, there's just one equation. In fact, there's two equations hiding it. Okay? There's one equation for the real. These guys have to be equal, and these guys have to be equal. So let's write that down. Minus 3 equal 2a plus b. That's one equation. And the other equation is, I don't need to write 4i equal 2b minus i. I can just write 4 equal 2b minus a. Can you see why I'm doing that? Okay, Because they're obviously both multiplied by i. So... So actually, and this is a very important uh, fact about complex numbers, they're always hiding inside them two bits of information, okay? And that you can solve, okay? And in fact, because we are a little bit short in time, I'm not even going to do it, okay? You know how to solve that, right? Yeah. You can do elimination, you can do substitution. I like personally elimination. I would multiply that equation by two. Or even better, I'll multiply that equation by 2, so I'm going to have minus 2a, add them together, get rid of the a, find the a to b, and then, then that's it. Okay? I'll just pause. Okay, so now what we ask in these kind of questions is factorize, right? Factorize the following. Okay? Now, you know, I'll do that with the grade. Actually, in fact, you do it in grade 9. Okay? So if I had... Let's start with this. Let's say z squared minus 16. How would I factorize it? What, what kind of this thing looks like? It's a dot. Dot, how is that? Okay, so will it be equal to z plus 4 times minus 4? Because it's this the difference of two perfect squares. Now, now I've got z squared plus 16. 16 is a perfect square. But my, I had to work out with my students and explain to them that you can't factorize that to z plus 4 times z minus 4. That's wrong. Okay? So the question is how, how can I factorize it? I'm, I'm just going to pause here and see what, if you've got any ideas. Okay, so, so what Rachel realized that, you know, I can turn, if I turn, it's not an equation. If I turn it to an equation, I can say z squared equal minus 16, and then I can find out what, what the roots are. And the roots of this equation are, well, in normal maths, for maths, we said there is no roots. But now in AP, we can say, yeah, there are roots. They're just imaginary roots. Sometimes the roots can be imaginary. So 
but I'm going to just do it without an empty equation because that can be a bit confusing. The way I would think about it is like that. I would say, okay, z, because what's the problem? The problem with this is my plus. If it was minus, it's okay. I'll, I'll show you how I show, first of all, how I teach my students in grade 9 to do it. Okay? But before that, how do I tell my lot to do that? I said, look, turn the, write them down as a difference of two squares. So instead of 16, it's a square of what? Four. And then I tell them to do that like a semi-state. And then they know, okay, now it's going to be z plus whatever you wrote here times z minus whatever you wrote here. Okay? So I'm going to do the same thing here. Like you just said, Rachel, I'm going to say z squared minus minus 16. Is that? Okay, minus minus is plus. And then I'm going to tell you to do the same thing I tell my grade nine. So you z squared, okay, I know what I wrote that as square. I need to write the square. I need to write now minus 16 is a square of something. What, what is the square root of minus 16? Well, it's not going to be 4. It's going to be 4i. Yeah. And I put brackets for it. Right? Because check that. 4 squared is 16. i squared is minus 1. Can you see it? Okay? So now, once I do write it as a difference of two squares, then we use this kind of recipe. It's going to be z plus 4i times z minus 4i. Okay? Yeah. I mean, you, you can, from now, you don't actually have to do the whole thing. That's just from the beginning. But basically, you know, if you have a plus, it's going to be the same thing it would have been with a minus, but there will be an i slap onto it. That <laughs> i squared will turn that minus into plus, or plus into minus. Okay? Alright? Now, this is the same thing, but obviously, uh, uh, are we alright with it? Yeah? Okay. This is just the level up. Okay? Now, the way you do this, and there are other ways, and maybe we'll discuss them later, um, but like, not necessarily the easiest way, but the more, the way they show in the book, and that's kind of the way it's maybe helpful, and you can hopefully, will help you understand, we're going to complete this square. I think it's called complete this square. Yeah. But now, I complete the square in a slightly different way, you'll see it. I, I think my way is a bit easier. <laughs> so, so, yeah, 9z squared minus 6z plus 5. So what I'm going to write, look, I'm going to, just like here, I'm going to write, try and write it as, um, as something, as a difference of a square. Okay? So I'm going to write this like this. I'm going to write, this is going to be something square. Okay? And, and in fact, well, there will be a, eventually minus minus, but we'll start with just a plus. Okay? So it's completely the square, really. It's a, if this, and I'm going to have something with a z, but what should that number in front of z be? 3, because it has to be, because 3 squared is 9. Okay? And then I'm thinking to myself, what does it, this is going to be, first of all, this is plus or minus, looking at that. So forget about this, just, it has to be minus. If this is minus, it has to be minus. You know where I'm heading, I'm using this formula. a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay? Now the question, and this is how I do, what does this number have to be to give us 6 here? 2. That's how I do complete the square. You know, at complete the square, you've got that minus b over 2a. I can't even remember what that formula they teach you. To me, I just work like this. I decide what this number, that's obviously it's going to be the square root of that. I decide that number, that need, if I time that number, I know, that not shouldn't be 2. No, it's about it when it's not 2. What should it Yeah, I can't. It's 1, because when I time these two numbers and double that, I need to get 6, right? And you're just going to get a remainder of 1. Exactly. I need to add whatever I need to add. But, but just to emphasize this, why is this not 1? Why is this 1 and not 2? Because when I multiply these two, I need to still double it to get the minus 6. That's where that formula you learn, it's like, I can't even remember it, but it's, I can't remember what the formula, but it's, there's something divided by 2 there, isn't it? There's a divide by 2. Oh, that's where it is. Okay? Well, it's completing the square. I can't remember what it is. A, B divided by 2. I can't remember what it is. Okay. Now, now we need to ask yourself, what should we have here? So, yes, you're right. You're right. But why? The way I do it, I, I write on the side. and said, okay, let's just square this one. So that's going to be 9 squared minus 6, just to make sure I get the right thing. Plus what? 1. Now, this is obviously good, but I'm still missing another 4 make it 5, because it needs to be 5. So like Rachel said, okay, we must add that 4. 
Okay? So that's the first step. We, we completed the square. You can complete the square in any way you want. Now the next step, we do what we've done here. Because this is now a square plus a square. Now a square plus a square, like this one, in real the real domain, I can't solve it. It doesn't have a solution. We say there's no roots. But now, no, I can say I can do that. I can write it as 3z minus 1 squared. What should I write instead of plus 4? Minus, minus 4. Okay? And then I'm going to, look, you don't need to do all these steps. Okay? I'm just doing it to show. That's going to be minus. Like my grade 10 students, I teach them to write that as 4. I teach them, yeah, it's 16. I taught them to write it as 4 squared. So I need to write minus something squared. What should be squared to give us minus 4? 2i. 2i squared. So and once they've written that, then it just automatically write down uh, 3z uh, minus 1 plus 2i times 3z minus 1 minus 2i. That's factorizing. Okay, just pause here. So now I just feel like I want to change that question because it's, it's like it's begging. Instead of factorizing it, let's say I was told, listen, solve this equation. 9 squared minus 6 z plus 5 equals 0. Okay? Now, obviously we can use the formula. Probably the, the easiest way is to use the formula, isn't it? But how are we going to use the formula? We're going to say z1, 2 it will be equal to... Remember b squared minus 4a, remember that? b squared oh, minus 4a, uh, minus, no, b, no, minus b, so minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Then I just will uh, add, let's just do it, let's just start doing that, okay? So what is minus b? In this case, I'm, I'm here. 6, so I'm going to write 6 plus minus square root of 36, well, I'll, I'll write it down like that. 6 squared minus 4 times 9, nine times five. 5 divided by 2 times 9. nine. Now, this, you know, you, you put in a calculator, you get two answers, right? You get, they're both going to be, what you'll find out, 6 squared is 36. 4 times 9 times 5 is 180. So we're going to have a, a, a negative number under the, the root, meaning it's going to be an imaginary number. So I'm going to have 6 plus imaginary number and 6 minus the same imaginary number. So it's simple. Exactly. It's going to be the, the complex number and it's conjugate. Okay? Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, what is 6? I'm not going to divide, find a, a, well, we will see it now here. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, even easier, okay, using the calculator. Where's my calculator? Do you know how to solve quadratic equation in the calculator? Yeah. Yeah, you put the ax squared plus bx plus c. You're putting these a's, okay? I've tried it before, and what you'll get, the two answers in terms of, a plus bi and a plus minus bi. You will, it will work out. I tried it. Okay? Yeah. But actually now I want to show you a different way. I want to show you a different way. Um, so I'll, yeah, I'll erase this. So if, and I won't say that's the easy way. It's not the easy way. But if you were asked to factorize, and we did factorize here, and you now you're asked to find the solution, then to me the easiest thing is just, if I know this is equal to that, all I've got to say, okay, that's equal to zero, right? Now, there's two options for this thing to be equal to zero. Either one of the brackets has to be equal to zero, right? So, for the first brackets to be zero, I need to write 3z minus 1 plus 2i. Fine? I mean, Because how would, I've got a number, some number times a number equal to zero. That means one of these numbers, one of these brackets must be equal to zero. Because it always equals the whole thing. And the, the equation at the top equals zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, that's the equation. I'm told solve that equation. That equation must be equal to zero. In the equation, I've got this thing equal to zero. Now, if you were just told to do that, use the calculator to do it. Easiest. But if you were asked, first of all, factorize without the equation. Factorize this uh, term. You factorize it. Now you say, listen, this is equal to zero. So there's two options, okay? Either this is equal to zero or this 
is equal to zero. And I'm actually going to take time to solve it because it will prove to you that we always have these solutions in case. So if you don't mind, I'm going to do it pretty quick. So I'm going to say z equals, I'm going to push the 1 minus 2 pi and divide it by 3. So it's a third minus 2 over 3i. Can you see that? That's one solution. I push these two numbers there and divide by 3. Okay? And here is the same thing, z equals, now it's going to be 1 plus 2i, and I must divide them by 3. Okay? So you see, you get the same, you've got the complex, the, the, a complex number, and it's conjugated. Okay? This is minus, and this is plus. Okay? Oh, this board's here. Okay. So now, there's a different kind of question. You've got some cubic uh, equation, cubic, equa uh, cubic uh, uh, polynomial, and we're told it's equal to zero. And we show, first of all, we must we need to show that x equals minus 2 solves the equation. And then they're asked to find the others, the other solutions. How do I show that minus 2 solves that equation? That's a bit of a funny one. That's, I think some people get stuck. How do I show that minus 2 is a solution? What do I need to do? Yeah, but that will, to solve that equation, to solve a cubic equation, that's difficult. I mean, but to show that minus 2 solution is easy. What do put I, it in the first put part. Put it in. You just put it, you put it every time there's x, you write minus 2. Minus 2 cubed plus 6. You see, that's very easy. But I know people will think, what does that mean? Uh, yeah. Okay, you just show that if you put minus 2 in front instead of x, you will get 0. And we'll just believe them that it happens. Okay? <laughs> you, can, you can just punch it in. You can punch it in. Okay, and it turns out it gets zero. Okay, great. Now, how do I find the other solutions? How many solutions should there be? The maximum, let's say. Three. So we've got one. We need another two. You need to first bracket x plus two. That's it. So we're going to say that, um, I want to just write it like that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to write x cubed plus 6x squared plus 16x plus 6 equal x plus 2. I can factorize it. Okay, as x plus 2 times, here I'm going to have another polynomial. Now, I decided to do that. I can see your face. We've done that in the beginning of last year. And I think it's difficult. It's solving it by inspection. So that's why I thought, let's just do it here. Now, what kind of polynomial are we going to have here? What's the, what's the highest uh, x there? High x exponent? X squared. squared, isn't it? It's going to be x squared. I'll call it ax squared plus bx plus c. We need to determine a, b, and c. We determine them by inspection, okay? And what does that mean? It means we start multiplying in our head here, and we're making sure that these coefficients are the right. So x times ax squared needs to be equal to x cubed. So in other words, a equal, what must a be? <coughs> 1. 1. Because <coughs> x squared times x is the only way to make up x cubed. Okay? Now, I need to look at the squares, okay? So if I look at the square... Okay, I've got 6x squared here on this side. Let's check out all the squares. How can I make a square here? Well, 2x squared. 2x squared. And then x times 2x. So b plus 1x, right? Because b, bx squared. Oh, no, sorry, I'm wrong. It's not plus 1. It's just bx squared. Yeah, yeah that's the only way, uh, way to make squares, right? There's nothing else. Okay, what does it tell you? What is b equal to? 4. b is equal 4. So we're going to write 4. And then lastly, it's actually not difficult. You just got to remember like, like what's the method behind that. Now we look at the x. <coughs> so the x's, I've got cx. Uh, no, hang on. On this side, we've got 16x. Okay? And then on this side, I'm going to have cx plus 8x. 8x, because 2 times 4. So what does c equal to? Mm. 8, yeah? Yeah, because c plus 8 is 16, so c is there. And then, sometimes there would be a reminder, right? Mm -hmm. In last, when we did it last, I can't remember what, what the reminder. But in this case, there isn't a reminder. There shouldn't be, because we know that x we call minus 2 is a solution. In other words, we can factorize this. We, we, we can write it as a factor of x plus 2, some kind of polynomial. There shouldn't be any reminder. And there is. 2 times 8 is 16, so we say. Okay? 
So great, now we factorize this. But how is that gonna help me? I still need to find out the solution. What what needs to be equal to zero now? Uh, either eight or two. Well, yeah, but this one I know that minus two. So, yeah, so, so that's it. So x squared plus four x plus eight must be equal to zero, and I need to solve that. And I imagine, shall we just do that? No. No. <laughs> the solution, I won't do it. You will find out that there isn't, this is, you can't use your normal trinomial because the answer actually is going to be in a complex number. So you need to solve it with the methods we spoke about before. Either use a calculator, probably the easiest way. Okay? I'm actually going to pause it and get you to do that now, just to make sure you got it. So use a calculator or use the formula minus b plus minus square root. Blah, 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 blah. Or if you're really uh, masochistic, then you can try and factorize it like I did before and show that. But we're not going to do that. Yeah? I'll just pause here. So what do we get? Yeah? Minus 2 plus 2i. Uh, minus 2 plus 2i. That's one solution. And that was minus 2 minus 2i. Now maybe just to finish this all up, because you managed to, uh, to do it exactly uh, already so quick, if I want to factorize this completely now, then I can write it as x plus 2 times what? Knowing that these are the two solutions. X. <laughs> now. Plus bracket minus. So I would I would say always do minus and then another bracket. Minus two plus two i. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, because if you put x equal minus two plus two i, you plug that in, that will turn it into to zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Zero. And then you time it by what you help me with the other one. X, X minus, minus oh, yeah, minus, and now the other solution. Y minus. Just like we have here, minus. We always do minus. Right? Uh, let's have a look at this. So, uh, okay, let me explain. Let's say I know that X equals 2 is a solution of some kind of polynomial. So, it's going to be X minus 2. There will be X minus 2 times something, right? Because if I, I put X I equals... Put the minus two in yeah? If I have x minus 2 as a solution, it's going to be x minus minus 2. Yeah. In other words, x plus 2. That was the case here. So here again, I have to do x minus minus 2. And the next one will be x minus minus 2 minus 2i. Two. We just put the other solution, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we should really, to make it nice and tidy, mm -hmm. open these brackets. So we're going to write as x plus 2 times x plus 2 plus 2i times x plus 2 no, that, that should be minus half 2i minus plus is minus and this will be x plus 2 plus 2i so that's how you factorize that okay all right we'll pause here right so last example for today we've got another cubic um, uh, polynomial and we told that x equals 2i is solution. And what they're asking us, what are they actually asking us? To factorize it? And then that solve. Another solve, yeah. So we want to find all the solutions. Uh, and, and the way we'll do it is by factorizing. So turning into a bracket, time a bracket, time a bracket. And then we can solve each bracket. Okay. So let's start with what we knew, like, like we did before. Before, when we had x equal minus 2, we would the minus 2 solution, then we knew that there is uh, some kind of, we try to factorize it with the x plus 2. How do we know it was x plus 2? It was basically x minus minus 2. Okay? Minus x minus 2. Okay. So now it's going to be, we're going to have a factor of x minus 2i. So we got 1. But there's still how many more solutions? Two. Yeah. So one more solution I know automatically. X plus two. Well, yes. So I know that there's another solution. That's one solution. The second solution is going to be minus two i because they come in pairs. In other words, I also know that there's x plus two i. Okay. So that's the like the cool thing if you get a comp uh, imaginary solution if, or complex solution. If you know a complex solution. It's like two for the price of one. You actually know two solutions, yeah. which is really cool, isn't it? Because then you can say, okay, 
x cubed plus 5, x squared plus 4, x plus 20, must be equal to x minus 2i times x plus 2i. And, okay, I'm going to get rid of this if you don't mind. We still need to multiply by what kind of polynomial? A real. It will be a real one, yeah. but what will be the exponent of the x? It will just be a binomial. It will be a binomial. It's just going to be x. It's going to be ax plus b, isn't it? It has to be because I've got x times x. That must be just x to get x cubed, right? Mm -hmm. Now, before you start multiplying ax times x minus 2i times b, uh -uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Because like Rachel said, that is going to be a real number. Okay? And these are all real numbers. So let's get rid of these uh, imaginary numbers. And I can do that. How can I do that? No, I, I'm all, just multiplying that. What is what is x? I'll write it. What is x minus two i times x plus two i? It's what we've got here is a complex number times it's co co uh, what do you call it? Conjugate. It's what? It's x squared. It's a difference of a square. You can say it's going to be this. So it's going to be x squared minus two i squared, isn't it? So it's going to be x squared plus. No, two squared. Ah, four. Four. Okay? Can you see it? All right? So, x squared minus uh, 2i squared. Okay? So, it's going to be x squared plus 4. And look at that. I just made that to do that. That's very easy. ax plus b. Okay? Now, I don't have any imaginary numbers. Okay. At this point, I'm looking at x cubed. So, I've got... Let's go blue again. Okay? So I've got x cubed must be equal to ax cubed, right? Because that's the only cube. So in other words, a is equal? One. One. Get rid of that. Okay. Next, uh, we're going to the x squared. So I've got 5x squared must be equal to, so we've got the x squared. x squared times b. So bx squared plus, so that's it. That's it, I think. All right? There's no other squares I can make here. Yeah, the only thing is x squared times b. This one is going to be 4x, that's going to be a number. So in other words, b is equal to? Oh, it's 5. 5. Now, let's just check. That like seems to be very easy. Let's check that the rest works. So x squared times x, x cubed. If it doesn't work, we give up anyway. It's too late, yeah, right? Yeah, it's multiplied by 20. Well, multiplied by 20. But, and then the 5 times uh, 4x, 4x. 5x squared, 5x squared, 5 for 20. Okay? That's it. That's it. So that's why, I mean, just have a look at it. We managed to, yeah, that's quite cool anyway. Don't have to really talk anymore about that. Uh, next time, we're going to do, uh, like, graphs, you can say. So we're going to look at complex number in a completely different way, as a vector. Okay? Cheerio.